When it comes to pedals, Kurt Cobain is most known for using distortion and chorus. Whether it be his small clone used along with a DS1 or a DS2, or the polychorus used with his Sans amp, these are the effects that Kurt Cobain is most known for. But in this video, we'll be looking at Kurt Cobain's delay pedal. And yes, you did hear me right. Kurt Cobain did use a delay pedal very briefly pre-bleach. And when I say he used a delay pedal, I don't mean that he used it in the traditional sense like this. If you're here on my channel watching my videos, then you probably already know and I don't have to tell you that Kurt Cobain was not a traditional guitarist. So when I say that Kurt Cobain used a delay pedal, I mean he used it more like this. He used it more as a way to create intense feedback. He also used it like this. And yes, that was a wah that you saw me using. And that's another obscure pedal that we'll be touching on because he did use a wah in the same period that he used this delay pedal. The specific delay pedal that he used was a Boss DM2. And how do we know that? It's all thanks to this picture, taken on June 27th, 1987, at the Community World Theater in Tacoma. Currently, there's no audio or video available from this show. There are a handful of pictures, and this is the one that gives us indication as to which specific delay pedal he used. We can see his orange Boss DS1 that he was using at the time, and then next to it is a purple Boss pedal and you can kind of make out the knobs on it. As far as I know, what I've seen in my research, this is the only picture where we can see his boss DM2. And if this picture didn't exist, I bet it would be a whole debate as to what was making that crazy oscillation sound in If You Must. But thankfully, we do have this picture to refer to, and it has been pinpointed down that it was in fact the boss DM2. So that's the first time we can visually see it is in this picture but we can hear it on a recording that was done a month prior on the May 6th, 1987 Chaos Radio Performance. This was a radio show appearance that Nirvana later on used as a demo. They used these recordings to book gigs. On this radio performance, we can hear it specifically on the first song, Love Buzz. We hear it being used in conjunction with the wah during the instrumental bridge towards the end of the song. I've tried to recreate this sound with my Boss DM2W and with my wah pedal. The DM2W is Boss's Wazacraft version of the original DM2. They are a lot easier to find and a lot more affordable than trying to get your hands on a vintage DM2 like Kurt had. There are two modes on this pedal. There's the S or standard mode and C or custom. Standard is the original tone of the Boss DM2, where Custom is a mode that Boss describes as a clear, customized tone with an extended delay time. So when I'm trying to recreate these sounds, I always have this pedal on S mode, on Standard, because that's the faithful reproduction of the original pedal like Kurt had. When I'm using this pedal, I'm using it with my pre-bleach slash Dale demo setup, Eastwood High Flyer Phase 4, my 70s Randall Commander 2 amp, my 92 Boss DS1, my wah pedal, and of course, the DM2W. As far as I've seen and with the audio and the video that's available to us, he really only used this delay pedal for two songs. So this is how he would use it in Love Buzz. Basically just letting it go crazy and oscillate in the feedback while using the wah to add some expression to it. I'm using this chaos performance as an example 
because it's the clearest reference I think we currently have to him using this pedal and the wah in this way together during Love Buzz. And when it comes to Kurt's wah pedal, there's even less known about it than there is of the DM2. And when I say less, I mean like there's virtually nothing known about it. Even like Kurt'sEquipment.com and the equipment guide on Live Nirvana, it's just listed as this unknown wah. We don't know anything about it other than that he did use it. The other song he used it in was If You Must. I think this is the most predominant example of him using it. And of the two, I just personally think it's the cooler example. I'm not really sure what you'd label this part. I think I would call it the pre-chorus, but he basically uses it during this section to create this like oscillation swell, which he overlaps with kind of like a droning vocal line, which creates a very cool effect. When I'm trying to recreate this sound while playing If You Must, these are the settings that I use. But here's the thing with this, we're essentially trying to recreate feedback and there are so many variables that affect how feedback can sound. Everything from how loud the amp is and to physically how close you are to if you're facing the amp or not. So this is a specific sound that's extremely difficult to pinpoint exactly because there are so many variables. So I have found that with these settings, you can kind of mess with the intensity knob to change it to taste basically, how strong you want the oscillation, or if you want it to build up, or if you want it to start just super intense right away. Here's a few examples of the intensity knob at slightly different places when trying to recreate this sound and how it can affect it. When it comes to pedal settings Kurt used, people often ask me like for the right settings or like how they should leave their like pedal locked if they want a Nirvana sound. And when it comes to this, there are no like set settings for this if you must sound. There's basically this range where you can mess with the intensity. Like I said, depending on if you want to build up gradually or if you want to start out super intense and super big. So those are the two ways in which Kurt Cobain used his delay pedal. And there are a few more examples of where we can hear it. There are the two practice tapes. There's the summer 1987 tape with Aaron Burkhardt on drums. That's the tape where the song Mrs. Buttersworth comes from. You can hear it on Love Buzz with the wah and also hear it by itself on If You Must. You can also hear it in the practice tape with Dale Crover from January 3rd, 1988. That was a practice that was in preparation for their studio session on January 23rd, 1988 which was their first studio session ever. That's when they went in with Dale to record with Jack and Dino at Reciprocal Studios and recorded what is known as the Dale demo. That's where we can hear it on the studio version of If You Must. We can also hear it on the show that took place that same night, right after the studio session on January 23rd on If You Must. So I just recently put out a guitar cover of If You Must where I use this pedal. And when I'm preparing to put a cover out, what I'll do is I'll watch available live footage just to kind of refresh myself on like exactly how Kurt played it. But when it comes to like deeper cuts like this song, that there's not much video to begin with, I also like to reference other people's covers just to see their interpretation and to see how it's been played before. And I was really surprised before I put my cover out when I was looking at other covers, I could not find a single one that use this pedal or any other pedal, frankly, to create a similar sound. It seems like what a lot of people were doing were just using their distortion to just like do this like one long strum during that part. I'm not trying to knock anyone down because of course you can play it however you want to play it. But if you're trying to like reproduce the sounds of the studio recording, I feel like this pedal is essential for this song. I feel like it's kind of like trying to play radio friendly unit shifter either without the poly chorus or similar sounding pedal, or it's like trying to play come as you are without chorus. I feel like that intense oscillation sound is such a defining part of that song's guitar sound and it just sounds really cool it's this flavor of effect that we just don't see later on this is one of the very few uses where we hear this in nirvana we also hear it on the march 19th show in 1988 also at the community world theater in tacoma this is the one where dave foster is on drums there's an excellent soundboard recording of the show we can hear it also during love buzz and if you must the Love Bus single session, as of now with the footage that we have available, is the last that we ever hear of this pedal and of Kurtois on the studio recording of Love Buzz during the instrumental bridge towards the end of the song. I think this is something that a lot of people miss because there's a lot going on guitar-wise during this portion of the song. So when I listen to it, this is what I hear. I hear two guitar tracks going 
And in my opinion, what I think is going on is that one of the guitar tracks has the DM2 and the wah going at the same time, creating a similar sound to the previous examples like we heard in the Chaos performance. And that track travels back and forth between the left and the right channel. Whereas the guitar track that stays mainly in the right is Kurt soloing with just the wah. Before doing research on Kurt's use of this pedal, I had never broken down Love Buzz or looked at it so intensely like that, like section by section and, and what the guitar tracks are doing. And when you think about it, it's a really cool, unconventional thing that they chose to do. It was otherwise a kind of straightforward like pop rock cover. They have all this guitar stuff going on the bridge just to like throw something out of the left field and something a little more dissonant, which is pretty cool. Also at this session is the most clear example of him using the wah during the sifting instrumental demo. The next recording that we have of them after this session is the rehearsal at Chris's mom's house in December of 1988. And there we can see that Kurt only has the DS1. So by this point in time, the DM2 and his wah are out of his rig. I'm not as confident in this next part, but I think we can also hear it on some home demos. One example in particular is a song that's known as Seed. I think we can hear the oscillation there, particularly during this part. In having this pedal, it's been kind of fun to take like a what if approach to it and use it in a more traditional sense. Like it's fun to imagine, let's say like Kurt ended up loving this pedal. Let's say it was kind of like the small clone where like once he got it, it never left his board. And what other ways would we have heard it? We could have gotten things that sounded like this. Or what if he also kept it on just to simply continue using it as he was, just as a way to create or extend feedback like this. So that was a look at Kurt Cobain's Boss DM2, the short-lived delay pedal, and also the wah that he used with it. Pretty obscure Kurt pedals to say the least that weren't used for very long, but I personally think it's really fun to like tackle these mysteries and to look into like the lesser known gear. So comment below what you think of this pedal, what you think of Kurt's use of it. Do you like it? Do you wish it would have stuck around? Are you happy it was just a temporary thing? And let me know what other pedals of his we should do a deep dive into. 